Hi YouTube, today I wanted to do a video on my seed haul. These are seeds I've actually purchased in the last couple of months, some of them as early as this week, but some of them probably from October. Um, I've been collecting seeds as I found them on clearance here and there, so I just wanted to share the seeds that I purchased and also some of the seeds in here are seeds that I already own but that I really like and I wanted to share those. Before I get started on the video, I did wanna also introduce you to my two gardening buddies. This is Boomer behind me, um, and Boomer is 14 years old. He is a golden retriever mixed with a Labrador retriever, and he's hanging in there for a 14 and a half year old. And this one over here, come here look, look, this one over here is my five year old um, shepherd mix. She is named Laguna, and uh, both of them love to go in the garden with me. I have to have a fence in my garden so that they don't go and eat everything out of my garden. Um, but they love to sit outside my garden whenever I'm harvesting anything. They always know, I'll call them. Um, it basically starts with like probably the radishes and the moves on to strawberries. But whenever I have extra uh, vegetables, I always call them to give them cherry tomatoes or other random vegetables and they absolutely love it. So. I do call them my gardening buddies. If they could actually help me dig holes or something, that would be really nice, but they're good dogs. So let me get started on the seeds that I purchased. Okay, I tried to group these in some kind of categories, uh, but like I mentioned, a lot of these are seeds that I just recently purchased, but there are some seed packs that I've mixed in that, um, that are just ones I really, really like and wanted to share those with you. I generally get my seeds from a couple of places. One of them is MI Gardener in Michigan, and then another one is Baker Creek. Um, their seed packets are the more colorful, really pretty packets, but their prices are slightly higher also. And I also pick up um, seeds from like local, you know, like Home Depot or Walmart. Um, but recently I did find a new company um, in the spring in the fall, a lot of seed companies, I'm not sure why this is, but there's a law apparently that they can't sell seeds from this year that were packaged for this year in next year. And so a lot of companies will discount their seeds and sell them like at a discounted price in the fall because they, they're not allowed to sell those in the following year. I'm honestly not sure what places like Home Depot or Walmart do with their seeds. I would be really curious to know because I would buy those at a discounted price, but they generally just, I think they throw them away or they, um, I'm not sure what they do with them. But anyway, this company is called BBB Seeds. Um, this is what their packets look like. And they had them discounted in the fall. So I did get a lot of packets from them. And I don't know if they were just doing it because they were trying to get rid of their packs, but for like every one pack I ordered, in some vegetables they sent me one pack, but in some, they sent me two. So if I ordered one pack of carrots, I got two packs of carrots. So I'm not complaining, they were really good and I'm going to definitely be looking at them next year. So let me get started. The first one is this carrot. This is from Baker Creek and I've grown these carrots before. I do not have a whole lot of luck with carrots. Um, I don't tend to do well with vegetables that grow in the ground. Maybe I do not have very good soil for it. I do try to, um, I have raised beds, that's what I'm growing in. So I do try to fill them with compost or at least put some compost in it. This year, um, due to my neighbor being so gracious to me, she went with me and helped me get a whole bunch of compost. And I was able to mostly fill most of my raised beds. I have like two beds that are maybe not completely full, but all the other ones I was able to fill. So I am beyond grateful to her because I couldn't have done it on my own. It's, um, we can go to the county and purchase from the county, but I don't have a truck. So we have to put it in bags, bring it home. It's a big job. So anyway, this is a Curota carrot. I've grown these and I've had good luck with them. They're on the smaller side. Um, the next is this carrot I've tried to grow um, for the first, I'm, I'm gonna try to grow for the first time. These are red atomic carrots. I just like the idea of red carrots. Um, I'm originally from Pakistan and over there, my mom tells me, I cannot remember this, but most of the carrots were like this color. So they're not like the orange color that we see here. The next, um, the next variety is a variety I've grown a lot. And these are called Danvers Half Long. And the reason I grow these is because of the fact that they grow really, sh they're short carrots. So they tend to do well in my, um, dirt because I can't, like I said, I can't grow things that are very long. They don't seem to do well. They come out deformed or not at all. 
The next ones are tomatoes. This is obviously just a small fraction of the seeds I have, um, but this is probably the tomato I've had the best luck with. Um, I might be butchering the names of these seeds, but I'm gonna do my best. I call it an orange russellini, and I don't think it looks very orange, but nonetheless, it produces a lot of tomatoes. They're like plum tomatoes, the size of plum tomatoes, and they do really well, in my garden anyway. Um, these, I've actually not grown Amish paste potato, sorry, Amish paste tomatoes, but I've heard that they're really good for canning, and I do tend to like, I do can, um, so I thought I would give these a try. They said that they just have a lot less seeds and juice inside of them. They're more like the flesh of the uh, tomato. Um, the next one is these mushroom basket. I have never grown these until last year and they did quite well in my garden. I didn't get like a ton of them, but the ones that I got were gigantic. I did not expect such big tomatoes. They were amazing and beautiful. And this is a tomatillo. Um, also my first year last year was growing, last year was my first year growing toma tomatillos. I got these seeds from Walmart for 50 cents. And um, for the first couple months, it just didn't seem to be doing anything. The plant was growing, but I saw no sign of any vegetable on it. And in the fall, it actually produced a good amount. So I was quite pleased with it. This is the only uh, flower one I'm going to show you. And this is a flower I really like. Um, it's actually a flower my mom used to like. My mom passed away a couple years ago. And so I kind of plant this in, in memory of her because she really liked it. It actually, once you plant it once, it drops the seed and will keep coming back year after year. But it reminds me of my mom. And so this is a flower that I grow every year. I do have flowers in my front yard. I just don't buy a lot of flower seeds. I tend to buy more vegetable seeds. The next is my onion seeds. Um, or in this case, it's leeks. I grew these for the first time the year before last. Um, I did not really honestly expect much of anything. They were scrawny little plants and I didn't think they would go anywhere, but I let them grow all season long. And at the end of the year, I had a good amount of leeks. I mean, they weren't like this kind of pretty picture ones, but they were nice sized leeks. So I was very pleased with them. Okay, and these are some of the onions. I tend to pick, when I pick onions, I tend to pick onions that are long storing onions. Um, but I'm not sure how much you're aware of how you grow onions, but basically there's kind of like three types of onions grown in the US, the top half of the US. They're um, called long, long day onions. It's basically based on how much sunlight um, the area receives the middle of the US kind of is intermediate and then the bottom is a short day onion. So most of these onions are long day onions or intermediate because that's the area that I live in. These ones are, um, also I've never grown these, but I'm trying these for the first time, but these are not gonna be ones that store very long because they're sweet and onion, any onions that say they're sweet tend not to store very long. And I do try to pick onions that store longer. Um, this is another one that I've purchased this year for the first time. They're supposed to be a long storing onion, so I guess we will see how they do this year. This is an onion I got as part of like a grab bag of seeds, and it is not the onion for my area. This is a short term, short day onion, but I'm gonna try growing it this year because why not? I have the seeds and I figured if nothing else, hopefully it will produce green onions for me. Also, this is a pack of, um, it's like an Asian eggplant uh, seed that I got at the local Korean store near me. So I'm gonna try to grow like a plant or two of these. I really like these long variety eggplants. These are some yellow bean seeds that I got this year. I do have green ones, but I just thought these looked really beautiful and I figured I would give it a shot. And like I mentioned, this company was having a sale, so it was worth giving it a, sh I think they were like 50 cents and they sent me two packets. So I'm definitely gonna be growing these. I grew a whole bunch of green beans a couple years ago, um, probably like two years ago, but unfortunately I had a lot of problems with these little yellow caterpillars that were like everywhere. I was constantly removing them off the plants. I got a good amount of green beans nonetheless, but it was a bit of a nuisance. But I'm gonna still try it because 
I do plan on canning green beans. I'm hoping to uh, grow a lot of these and hopefully can them. And then I also make my own food for my dogs. Um, so I would like to be able to use green beans in their food also. I have never grown corn, or maybe I should say I've never successfully grown corn, but I wanted to grow popcorn corn, and I read that this is a variety that is good for turning into the pop, like drying it and using it as popcorn. So I'm gonna give it a shot this year and see what happens. Um, I really am trying to grow as much of my own food because how much popcorn does one person need? I mean, like for a family, you don't need like 50 pounds of popcorn. So I feel like even if I get a couple heads, uh, I mean, a couple um, ears of popcorn corn, it should probably be enough for me. So I feel like I basically try to figure out how much will a normal person need in a year and try to maybe, you know, grow that much or buy that much. Um, this is another variety that I'm gonna try this year. Um, and the reason I picked them is because I don't know if you can see from this picture, but a lot of times when you see corn, it's because um, the corn is all like lined up nicely in rows. And this is like all over the place. It just looks like it's, I'm not sure how to describe it, but it's just kind of a different design. So I thought I'd figure I'd give that a try too. Okay, um, the next one is like a lot of squashes, different squashes that I have. This is probably one of my favorite. Um, I started growing this last year. I heard really good things about the Long Island cheese pumpkin and I got two pumpkins from it. So that was not spectacular or anything, but I was quite pleased with them. And I actually used one of the pumpkins at Thanksgiving. Um, I made a recipe for pumpkin roll and I did not use canned pumpkin. I actually baked this and was able to use it for my pumpkin roll and it was delicious. So I definitely want to grow more of these. And as I mentioned, I make um, food for my own dogs and I a lot of times will put in squash, green, you know, like green beans, other kind of vegetables in there. So this is one that I really want to grow a lot more of so I can use it for the dogs. This is another squash I've never grown, but I got these seeds to try. I have actually tried like a different Hubbard squash, but it didn't do well, but I just keep trying different varieties. And this, um, I have always been told this is called patty pan squash. So it has a beautiful like star, like well maybe scalloped design is the more appropriate way to say it, scallop design. And this is like this pretty orange color. So I'm gonna give this a shot. I grew these last year. They grow really long. Um, I only ended up getting one of them, but like I said, I'm gonna try again. And they are really good because if you pick them when they're young, they're a summer squash, or you can let them uh, stay on the vine and they become basically a winter squash and you can store them. This is another one that I planted for the first time last year, Georgia Candy Roaster, or Rooster, Roaster. Um, did not have a lot of luck, but I've heard from people that it grows really well, so I'm gonna keep trying and Maybe last year was not my year, but this year will be. This is one I've been growing for quite a while. It's called a Kushaw squash. This thing grows to be a huge size. It is not good for storing very long term. It does not store well at all, but it grows to be a huge squash. And it is actually pretty good too. Um, these last two squashes are squashes. Uh, I've never grown this back home in Pakistan or anything, but um, I was a child when I came anyway, so I wouldn't have grown any vegetables, but um, this one says they see squash, which the word they see just means like stuff that you would, they see means like stuff you would have grown back home. And so this is just um, a squash that's like, I guess it's, it says, I think that it came from India, which I'm not from India, but it's a similar area anyway. And um, it produced really, really well when I grew it. It did very well and I got a lot of it. So I'm gonna try growing it again. And this I bought, this is a, a vegetable that I would eat back home. It was actually one of my favorite vegetables. I also love okra. I grew up on okra and absolutely love okra. And this is another one, we called it a tinda. And 
it's actually just like a zucchini but it's kind of you can't see it from the picture but it has like a little fuzz on the vegetable and we used to make this my mom would make this growing up and i absolutely love it i have not successfully been able to grow it but i got these seeds from baker creek and i figured i would give it a try because maybe from seed variety seed variety i might have better luck so i'm going to give these a shot for this year these are just some radishes I got from the same seed company, BB Seeds, and radishes are usually one of the first things I plant in the spring, along with potatoes and peas, because um, they have such a short turnaround window, and they also grow very well in cool weather, so I can't wait to get these in. I'm not a huge radish eater, but if you've ever tried them um, like baked in the oven, they taste completely different, and they are amazing. So last, I'm just gonna go through a hodgepodge of all these different seeds. Um, this is also a seed that I just bought this week. Uh, it's a Richmond green apple um, cucumber. I do not have a lot of luck with cucumbers. I don't consider cucumber to be a difficult vegetable to grow, but for some reason they grow deformed. They don't grow at all. Um, and then I also have to compete with my dogs because I grow it along a fence and they basically pull the cucumber off the plant before it even gets a chance to grow. So I'm gonna give these a try because these are smaller and I'm hoping that, I'm just hoping that I'll have better luck with them. Also, these are my parsnip seeds. I never had luck with parsnip until one time I planted the parsnip in the fall because parsnip tends to like cooler weather. So I t was told you can plant it in the spring or you can plant it in the fall. So in the spring, it didn't do anything. But in the fall one year, I planted it and I didn't even think it had sprouted. I didn't really even know what a parsnip plant looked like. So I went on my merry way. Well, the next year I was digging up my garden to get it ready to plant things. And I found parsnip, like a big, huge parsnip in the ground. It had grown over the winter. So since then, I now plant parsnip in the fall and I always pray that it overwinters and that in the spring it will produ produce me some parsnip. So I've planted a whole bunch of plants and I'm waiting to see probably around March, April or May and see if there's parsnip in the ground. And this is um, some red cabbage. I absolutely love uh, sauerkraut. I'm not very good at making it, not very successfully, I've never made it, but it's definitely on my list of things that I like to be able to do is to grow cabbage and cabbage can be stored for a good period of time. So I like the vegetables that I can store, you know, store long term. And this is turnips, self-explanatory pretty much. I um, don't get huge turnips, but I do have pretty good luck with growing turnips. They, for some reason for me, like the seed packets will say it will grow in 60 days. Nothing ever grows for me in 60 days. And I have a very sunny backyard. So it's not even like I have a very shady backyard and there um, would be delayed because of that. I actually have a very sunny backyard. But so I never get to, in the beginning I used to think, oh, 60 days has passed. I don't have anything. They're, they're just not gonna grow. But now I've learned to be a lot more patient and they generally do come. This is a seed um, for a lettuce that I really like, a butter crunch one. I got these for free actually. Baker Creek used to send you one free seed packet with every order, but now they've changed it to the seed order must be $10. So if you order $10 worth of seeds from them, then they'll send you a pack of free seeds. And they pick the seeds, so it's not like you can pick it. Um, this is a seed for, I've, I've seen it called different things. Um, I've seen it called broccoli rob or broccolini. So I'm not sure what you're used to having this being called, but um, I don't have a lot of luck growing regular broccoli. So I figured I would at least give this a try. I'm just trying to put more vegetables in our diet and definitely grow as much of our own food because I don't put any chemicals on our food. So I feel like that's the best thing I can do since I can't really afford any organic food or very little organic food. Um, this is another lettuce that just looked really pretty, so I ordered it. This is um, some purple lettuce that I got for free from Baker Creek. Now, I am not a huge fan of Brussels sprouts, um, but I have noticed with a lot of vegetables that when I grow them, and they're grown by me, they just taste completely different. Like when they're grown in the garden, like peas are not my thing normally, but peas that come out of your garden to me taste like candy. So I figured I'm gonna give it a shot with the 
Brussels sprout. Maybe this will just taste a lot better when I've grown it myself. Or maybe I'll find some recipes that will just, you know, make it taste better. Same thing with the radish. I was not a huge radish eater, but now I've figured out that if you bake it, it tastes good. Um, so maybe I'll figure out something for Brussels sprouts or it will just taste good to me. But they are beautiful. I've seen them sold like the whole, I don't know, the stem of, I guess, the Brussels sprout. I've seen it at Trader Joe's and I think it's really pretty. So I'm gonna give it a shot. And that is basically the end of my seeds. Um, I hope you enjoyed seeing my uh, seed haul. If you're a fellow gardener, I'm sure that you will enjoy seeing it because I love seeing other people's seeds and see what they're growing. And I am in zone 7B. So these are some of the things that are for my zone. I do have a lot of fruit trees in my backyard. I'm really trying to expand my garden, but I do try to keep my vegetable garden in control. So I have like a set area. I don't plant vegetables everywhere, but um, sometimes I do get a little crazy and plant things here and there. But generally I try to control myself to the area that I've designated for my vegetable garden. And, um, but like I said, I have fruit trees, I have apple trees, I have Asian pear trees. The apple trees are just planted, so they're not gonna produce for a long time. Some fig trees, plum trees, and peach trees. I've had no luck with the peaches at all. They just get a disease and all of them rot. So, but I've had good luck with the figs and I've had good luck with the Asian pears. So I'm pretty hopeful that it will be another successful gardening year and I'll grow what I can. But I definitely try to grow as much as I can. I don't grow, um, I don't buy garlic anymore because I grow enough garlic for me to use. I basically grow a year's worth and then I just I peel it and I freeze it and I just use that all year long. And that's my goal with onions to grow like a year's worth of onions. Every year I feel like I'll just grow maybe first year I'll grow, you know, two months of onions. Next year I'll grow six months of onions. I just want to keep increasing how much I can grow and hopefully grow a lot of my own food. I really admire people that grow their own food. I think it's an amazing skill and one that I really want to improve my skill and that ability improve my ability in that skill. Um, I hope you enjoyed my seed haul and um, I will definitely be sharing my garden videos, more about my planting seeds. And this is part of me living a frugal life. It's part of me growing my own food and also doing what's good for my body. And I think it's really good for my body to not have chemicals on my food as much as possible. I understand we all have to live within a budget. So I hope you enjoyed this video and I hope you will like and subscribe to my channel and help me grow my channel. I would really appreciate your help in that and I will see you on the next video. Thank you.